despite Obama's unqualified statement of unwavering support for Israel and Zionism, the owner of the Atlanta Jewish Times, Andrew Adler, wrote just a few weeks ago that Israel should consider giving the go-ahead for U.S.-based Mossad agents to take out a president deemed unfriendly to Israel. In order for the current vice president to take his place and forcefully dictate that the United States policy includes its helping the Jewish state obliterate its enemies. Then Adler wrote this. Yes, you read correctly. Order a hit on a president in order to preserve Israel's existence. Did you hear about that? How many of you heard about that? Raise your hands. Oh, that's a small number of you. Now, when I say something, they make sure everybody knows if it's negative, fair con, the anti-Semite, fair con, the hater, fair con, the this. Why the hell didn't the media tell you what that man said about killing our brother in the White House? Talk back to me. It's because they protect their own regardless to the evil of their people. But you're going to get out of it today. You're going to make a different change today or I'll tell you what the results will be. A prominent American Jew suggesting and advocating the assassination of Barack Obama. Where's the Secret Service? Where's the FBI? Why didn't they arrest him? Did they bring him in for questioning? They said they would, but did they? But his Jewish brethren jumped on him. Chief among them was the head of the Anti-Defamation League, Abraham Foxman. But is it that Andrew Adler made a horrific statement? Or is it that he exposed the plot too early? Adler made another point that no one is addressing. What is the Israeli Mossad doing based inside America? This tells me that the synagogue of Satan is at work. Now, uh, this part of our lecture gets very serious. <clears throat> And uh, I want to open the Bible for you. Now, you know I didn't write the Bible. But I did learn to read. Revelation 2 and 9. When you get home, open your Bible. Listen to what it says. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. I didn't write it, but I'm going to explain it. Revelation 3 and 9. It wasn't enough in 2 and 9. They come back in 3 and 9. John the Revelator. And he said, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. 
Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. I wonder who that's talking about. Now listen, I want to quote the Quran to you. I just quoted the Bible. The Quran says, those who are Jews, those who are Christians or Sabians, those who believe in Allah in the last days and are the doers of good to others, they have their reward from their Lord. This Quranic verse is sufficient to tell us that there are members of the Jewish faith that are striving to live the life that Moses and the Israelite prophets taught. There are members of the Jewish faith that hold the principles and the teachings of the prophet dear to them. They have to be separated from those who say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Now here's my challenge to the Jewish people. You want good Muslims to condemn bad Muslims. You want good Christians to condemn bad Christians. You want good Negroes to condemn those that you say are bad. Well, what about you? What about this synagogue of Satan that say they are Jews and are not? When are you gonna rise up and put them down? and make them know that you are not of them. Now, to show you that Farrakhan is not teaching hate, this is a book that just came out a few days ago it's the Obama hate machine. The lies, distortions, and personal attacks on the president and who is behind them. So don't look at me like I'm doing something wrong. Two books just came out. The New Hate by Arthur Goldwag. Now, if a hate machine is grinding out stuff to turn the country into a hateful spirit against our brother, do you remember in the Bible and in the Quran when Cain became envious of his brother Abel? The Quran says it started with envy envy grew to hatred and hatred grew to murder you quranic students do you know that remember that well if an atmosphere is being created of hatred for obama what is the next step Did you know that at first, members of, Jew of the Jewish community were very close with Obama and they wooed him and in their media, New York Magazine had a picture on the cover of Obama wearing a yarmulke with the title, The First Jewish President. Did you know that 80% of the people that surround him in his administration are Jewish? How could he be an enemy of Jews? What is it 
that you expect from him that he's not doing that make you now use your media to create an avalanche of hatred against the president. I'm going to get to it. Some Chicago Jews in Haaretz, a major daily Israeli newspaper, they ran a story, a headline. Some Chicago Jews say Obama is actually the first Jewish president. Remember how you used to foolishly say that Clinton was our first black president? And we lost more under Clinton than under Nixon. See, you get so deceived just by a few black faces in an administration. White folk don't bring you up unless they feel they can use you for their purpose. Now, you white people that are here, I'm not lying to you. You bring a black person up, and exalt them, you exalt them to use them for your purpose. All right. Now, oh, no, no, hell, I, I can't back down now. That's right. That's right. That's right. Come too far now. In the Quran, in the Maulana Muhammad Ali translation, in the third surah or chapter, the 54th verse, it reads, and I quote, and the Jews planned, and Allah plans, and Allah is the best of planners. The word, listen please carefully, the word for plan in Arabic is makr, M-A-K-R. It means he turns a thing, turns it, turns it. When you look at the beautiful promise of our brother, Barack Obama, that man wanted the best for this country and for all of the American people. He was not going to focus solely on black people, but he was going to focus on what he felt was in the best interest of every American. That was his spirit. And because he grew up in Indonesia, the largest Muslim nation on the earth, he had some brush with Islam and had a better appreciation of Islam than any of his predecessors. So Muslims felt that he could bring rapprochement between America and the Muslim world, between America and Africa, America and Central and South America, America and Mexico, America and Cuba. This is the Obama that made the world fall in love with him. You remember the scripture when Satan took Jesus up on the mountain? See, Satan offered to Jesus what his father had already planned to give him, and then some. But it had not yet come into view. Satan is always jumping in front of the promise of God to deceive the people into accepting less because they're not patient to wait on God to deliver on his promise. Now, Jesus had the strength to say, get thee behind me, Satan. However, President Obama cannot say it because he does not recognize Satan.
if you look at everything that our brother said that was in his heart to do for America and the world, he is now hamstrung and unable to do it. They did not care what he said prior to being elected, but once he got into office, their skill was to turn him in a direction that pleased them. You understand me? He's not fully turned yet. But they got him turning. Listen good now. No matter what President Obama has said or done to show Israel his commitment, somehow or another, he's failing in some important aspect of what they desire him to do. He's invaded every country that the neocons told him to. He went and got the stimulus plan that bailed out Wall Street. There's nothing that he has not yet done for Israel, but they're still not happy. The list of concessions that Obama has made to Israel is long. Now, I want you to listen carefully now. He claimed credit for killing the world's number one terrorist, Osama bin Laden. But did you ever stop to look at that? Well, let's look at it now. From the reports, of that military operation. Osama bin Laden was caught unarmed with his family around him. Seemed to me they could have gotten him, secured him, taken him out of Abbottabad, Pakistan, and brought him to a place where he could be interrogated about 9-11 and other alleged terrorist operations. They could have brought him to America and tied him up and drove him through the streets, letting the world know that this was the enemy that Bush said we wanted him dead or alive. You caught him alive. Now you say, they say, they had respect for his religion. So they took his body and they washed him and oiled him like we do our dead. And they had an imam come and say the janazah prayer and then they dumped him in the ocean. Now let me ask you this. This man captured alive would have meant a treasure trove of information for U.S. intelligence. You waterboarded some that followed him to get information. You are not against torture. If this man is a man plotting stuff all over the world against America and its values and its people, if this is the man that killed 3,000 people in the Twin Towers in America, why didn't you interrogate him? Could it be? that to kill him on the spot meant that he re really was not wanted alive because maybe much of what you charged him with you would never be able to prove in a military court or a court of law. Could it be that the 3,000 people that died at the World Trade Center 
were not killed by Osama bin Laden or Muslims at all? Could it be that that was used by our government a false flag operation to begin to deprive American people of what is guaranteed in the Constitution and the Bill of Rights? Could it be? See, you can't even wrap your mind around the thought that our government could have done something like that, killed 3,000 mainly Americans to get political advantage? You can't wrap your mind around that because it's impossible for you to think like Satan. Uh, but that's not your job. See, most of you can't follow me in this. You're going to have to find some heavy testicles to walk behind me. Damn cowardly group of leaders that we got. America, you killed an American citizen, Anwar al-Awlaki, who took issue with America's foreign policies. You say it is justified, even though it is a violation of the Constitution of the United States to have killed an American citizen without due process. And not only did you kill him, you went after him and killed his 16-year-old son and other family members. You, 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 you send your drones now. You killed Saddam Hussein, his sons Uday, Kusay, and you literally destroyed his country. Muammar Gaddafi had developed a beautiful plum that was the envy of Western society. Oh, they said it was a humanitarian mission. But why then did America use depleted uranium in cruise missiles to not only kill present generations, but to poison the atmosphere for future development of life? Doctors and residents of Fallujah in Iraq are blaming weapons like depleted uranium and white phosphorus used during two U.S. attacks on Fallujah in 2004 for what are being described as catastrophic levels of birth defects and abnormalities. And now, documents have surfaced that reveal that the so-called Arab Spring didn't start in the Muslim world. Well, where did it start? It started from plans in the United States to take over the Middle East, its natural resources for the Western world. But their Arab Spring is not going the way they originally intended and it has now turned into a harsh Arab winter and this is to say to America that even though you plan there is a planner over and above your plans who fulfills the scriptures that says in the Bible that you will lay a trap for others and get caught in it. You will dig a ditch for others, but you will fall in it. 
of four-star U.S. Army General Wesley Clark. Have you heard that name before? Well, let me tell you what he said. He said that 10 years before 9-11, Paul Wolfowitz, I want you to keep remembrance of these names because these are part of a shadow government. say it again these are part of a shadow government a shadow government means you got a government out front but you got another government behind that are trumping the things that the government out front is saying now I'm gonna prove what I say and you can take it or let it alone but you'll never be able to say that Farrakhan knew the truth and was too cowardly to tell it even at the cost of my own life. Mr. Clark said Wolfowitz, the neocon architect of Bush's war on Iraq, told him of plans to clean out the Middle East and take over those Muslim nations. Just 10 days after 9-11, Clark was shown a Pentagon memo that describes how they planned to take out seven countries, Muslim countries, in five years, starting with Iraq, then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and then Iran. They call this project the Greater Middle East Project. But for the public and the media, they're calling it the Arab Spring. Journalist and historian William Engdahl is reporting that some of the Arab protest leaders were trained to be instigators in Belgrade, Serbia, by activists financed by the U.S. State Department. Mm -hmm. Now, Look here, if the State Department is financing this, let's see what Mr. Engel has to say more. He said the ultimate goal of the United States is to take the resources of Africa and Middle East under military control in order to block economic growth in China and Russia, thus taking the whole of Eurasia under control. Now, you may not know it now, but America is already at war with China and Russia. Well, wait a minute now, Farrakhan. I think you're going a little far. No, I haven't gone far enough. We had a seminar yesterday called Business is Warfare. America is at war right now with China and Russia. I'll prove it in a minute. You just hang in there with me. You can't get this nowhere in America but by the voice of a man trained by God's apostle, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Engdahl goes on to say the Pentagon's Africa command called AFRICOM is coordinating the whole operation. Now, 
Engdahl said, he's a historian, a scholar, but either he's lying or he's telling the truth. He says, interestingly, AFRICOM was created just after 2006, China's Africa diplomacy, when 40 heads of African nations were invited to Beijing, China, and enormous deals were signed on oil exploration, building hospitals and infrastructure, anything the IMF did not do in Africa over the last 30 years. China and Russia has been in Africa working with African governments. Now think about this. In China, I mean in Libya, when the fighting started, nearly a hundred thousand Chinese had to leave Libya. They weren't in Libya sightseeing. They were working throughout Libya building infrastructure for development. And when NATO started bombing, Gaddafi said, no more oil to Europe, but Russia and China, they had to kill him. It's warfare. And anybody that gets in the way has to be dealt with. Today, I'm putting myself in your way. I want you to come and deal with me so that my God can show you that I'm not standing by myself. In 1974, I want you to hang with me. You won't even know the time. This thing gets better by the moment. Listen, in 1974, Henry Kissinger, who was then Secretary of State under President Nixon, signed National Security Study Memorandum 200 titled, quote, Implications of Worldwide Population Growth for U.S. Security and Overseas Interests. It was adopted as official policy in 1975 by President Gerald Ford. Now, those who analyzed the report said Dr. Kissinger proposed that, listen, depopulation. You know what that means? I'm going to say it again. Can you spell? You look it up. Depopulation should be the highest priority of U.S. foreign policy towards the third world. Africa! Listen to your brother from America! Your leaders aren't worth your love! That's why Muammar Gaddafi told the people Listen to Louis Farrakhan. He will tell you what is going on. I'm going to say that again. Depopulation should be the highest priority of U.S. foreign policy towards the third world. He quoted reasons of one, national security, and because the U.S. economy will require large and increasing amounts of minerals from abroad, especially from less developed countries. Now let me stop here for a moment. 
in order for America to remain a power in the 21st century, she must have access to strategic metals and minerals that are found in Russia and in Africa, especially Central Africa. So if there are minerals there that America needs, you Americans, I want you to listen to me. You that can't wrap your mind around Satan, but I'm going to bring him to you today and put him in your lap. And if you are too cowardly to look at Satan, and deal with Satan as Satan is. And you don't have long to live on this planet because Satan's day is up. He's going down. And I represent the power that's here to take him down. Now listen to what Kissinger is saying. Wherever a lessening of population can increase the prospect for such stability, population policy becomes relevant to resources, supplies, and to the economic interests of the United States. Now we're going into Satan's lair. All right. All right. Other analysts have said that, quote, although this plan of action was to be activated in developing countries, it was designed as a two-edged sword that could be swung with equal determination in both developed and developing countries alike. Oh man, I, I wish that you all had time. <laughs> Listen. In Europe right now, Patrick Buchanan wrote a book, The Decline of the White Race. In Europe, it's zero population growth for white people. That means they feel within the next 30 to 50 years, the population of white people in Europe will be gone down, down, down. Well, who's in Europe now that this depopulation needs to be exercised in developing countries and developed countries? See, my brothers here and sisters from England. Look at the people that are coming to England from the former colonial territories of the British Empire. From Pakistan, from India, from the West Indies, from Asia. You run to London, you run to England. But they don't want you because if you stay in a few years, you become the master of their land because they are dying. And since you love the white woman and the white man loves the black woman, you all start cohabiting and then a whole new kind of human being is coming up in Europe that's not white anymore. So we killing you one way or another. And we're not even trying. Now, Brother Akbar is here with me, my son. We were in Zimbabwe. In Zimbabwe, where the president is President Mugabe. Thank you, brother. You got a good man as your hero. 
Mugabe is about the only one in Africa that stood up with strength. May Allah be pleased with him and give him even longer life to trouble the West. But in Harare, the number one industry was building coffins. 5,000 Africans each week were dying, 20,000 a month. From what? AIDS. I was a guest of the Ministry of Health. And when we were at luncheon with the Ministry of Health, they were bragging that every child in Zimbabwe had been vaccinated. The man that is your former slave master, you trust him to put a needle in your arm. Though the Tuskegee experiment should have shown you. He don't love you. You, my Native American brothers and sisters, you trust them to vaccinate you and your children? Don't you remember smallpox? Don't you remember? They came with a good idea. It's cold. We're going to give you Indians some blankets. But the blankets were laced with smallpox, killing tens of thousands of our Native American brothers and sisters. Have you forgotten? Have you become that stupid and insensitive? And it's because you think Elijah Muhammad lied to you. Oh, I'm, I'm too big for hate. You're a damn fool. You're not bigger than God, and God hates. Who the hell are you to say you don't hate when God removes entire nations from the earth that he don't like? You're just a coward. You hate your mother when she don't give you what you want. You hate your father, you kill your brother. But you don't hate, you're a damn liar. Why are dead people dying in the ghetto? Because you love? Hell no, you hate. But your hate is unintelligent. Now, did you know that Henry Kissinger, when they signed that into law, the document was signed by Henry Kissinger, depopulate the third world. I'm going to say it again, kill people in the third world and it was signed by Henry Kissinger and listen to who it was directed to secretaries of defense agriculture central intelligence the deputy secretary of state the administrator of the agency for international development with a copy to the joint chiefs of staff now that's a whole government involved in killing people all over the earth. Kissinger prepared yet another depopulation manifesto for President Jimmy Carter called Global 2000, which detailed using food as a weapon to depopulate the third world. All right, let's see.
Have you been to McDonald's lately? I'm not laughing, damn it, I'm not laughing! And damn it, don't you laugh! Because they're killing you with your taste buds. You don't understand Satan, but you'll hate me for exposing them today. There's a slime in the burger. It's got silicone. They've practiced how to deceive your taste buds and your nose. You smell something that smells like chicken. You taste something that tastes like chicken, but it's chemicals. You want more fast food? And they, I'm loving it. <laughs> your children driving you out of your mind. Take me to Mickey D's. See, you lazy woman. You don't want to get in a damn kitchen and cook. So you bring your children to these fast food places, killing them and yourself because you're too damn lazy and trifling to cook again. Who the hell wants a woman with a good shape and a fat behind that don't know how to prepare no food for her husband and her children? To hell with a woman like that. I knew it was going to be tough today, but I didn't know how tough. Your grandmother knew how to cook. You know how to make a baby, but don't know how to cook food. You know how to shake your behind, but don't know how to rattle some eggs in a pan. Satan got you. You go to church and on the way from church you stop in fast food. Reverend, you're going to have to do better teaching this people. Because I'm going to have the people sit you down. See, it's time now. We can't take it no more. And when you sell out your people for the favor of your enemy, you got to die. I'm sorry. I'm full. And I'm hurting for you. I love you. And I'm a reflection of the love of Master Farad Muhammad and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad for you. Let us recall what Zbigniew Brzezinski said, former national security advisor under Jimmy Carter. Listen to his words. The major world powers, new and old, also face a novel reality. While the lethality of their military might is greater than ever, their capacity to impose control over the politically awakened masses of the world is at an historic low. 
To put it bluntly, he said, in earlier times, it was easier to control one million people than to physically kill one million people. Today, it is infinitely easier to kill one million people than to control one million people. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad warned us. He said the scientists of this world so wicked in devising more stealthy means of killing millions That's of right. people. See, you can't think like that. But I want to introduce you to Satan. See, you've always thought Satan was some spirit. Spirits, yeah, Satan got a spirit all right. But the scriptures that I read, both Bible and Quran, oh, let's talk about it. The Quran says, follow not the footsteps of the devil. Well, hell, I didn't know the devil had feet. The Bible says, that day, what day? Judgment day. That day shall not come, except there be a falling away first, and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. It ain't no spook. Isaiah the prophet said, Oh, Lucifer, son of the morning, how art thou fallen from heaven, thou that didst weaken the nations? They shall narrowly look upon you and say, Is this the man? Is this the man? They have used a series of methods for global depopulation. One, depleted uranium bombs. Genetically modified foods. You notice they sent the document to Monsanto? Look them up on your uh, iPad or your computer. Google them up. Listen. Did you know? 356 million pounds of dioxin are found in the earth. You're growing food. What is dioxin? It's the same ingredient that was in Agent Orange that was used in Vietnam to defoliate the plants. Is this a real plant? Now let me tell you something. If something is that strong that can defoliate leaves, the Bible says all flesh is as grass. Look at your flesh and look at the leaves. See, if it can defoliate this, it can kill you. Dioxin in your food, sludge in the ground where they're growing food. They sent it to agriculture because everybody has to eat but you don't control what you eat you run to the supermarket they make it look good they make it taste good but all of a sudden you are dying from cancers chemical additives in food Poison in vaccines, 
AIDS and Ebola, illegal wars, chemtrails. They just fly over the city. And you see a trail up in the sky. Well, it's got to come down. But what's in the chemtrail? All of a sudden, everybody got a virus. Where the hell did you get it? All of you sick before Savior's Day. Coughing and spitting. Where did you get it? You think you're dealing with some human being? You're dealing with the beast of revelations. But America, Allah is the best of planners. Elijah Muhammad came and taught us how to eat to live. Master Farad told Elijah Muhammad how to teach us. And your Quran tells you that when the Messiah comes, he will teach you what foods to eat and what foods to store in your houses. The Prophet Muhammad did not teach you that. He gave you foods that were given in the Torah as well for the Jews. But to teach you how to weather the storm of radiation. You got your cell phone? You like your cell phone? Radiation. You put it on your hip. We buried a brother. Last year, one of the Muslims who had cancer, he said, I used to carry my cell phone right on my belt and he ended up with cancer of the organs in this area. Johnny Cochran died cancer of the brain always taking calls you're all so busy when you didn't have no damn phone except in your house you had to wait till you went home but today you busy and every five minutes you on a phone more radiation you can't cook your food no more. You drop it in the microwave, radiation. You sit in front of the television, radiation. You got your iPod, your iPad, your computer, radiation. Go to the airport, come through this machine, radiation. You get a cough, you go get a chest x-ray, radiation. You say, I need a... MRI, radiation, I need a CAT scan, radiation. So you're eating radiated foods. But you're eating all kind of times a day. Elijah Muhammad said one meal a day. A good meal to give your blood time to build up strength to cast the toxins out of your body he said get that bean that navy bean that natural bean the pulse in it will ward off the effects of radiation but you don't like muslim food from elijah muhammad well diet in you can't let a man from God teach you how to save your life, then die. The world will be better off with you being eaten by a damn worm. <laughs> yeah, I know it's rough, but what the hell, I'm the teacher today. You just need somebody that ain't going to sugarcoat nothing for your raggedy behind. You need somebody to tell it to you straight.
you got these milk toast punctified teachers that want your money and your favor but they don't want the favor of God I don't give a damn about your favor well they saw a plum in Libya it looks so good Europe got it the money gone in Libya the gold gone people not getting what they used to get under Gaddafi but let me tell you something you get what you deserve if you can't stand up for a good leader, then die under the no good leaders that always follow good leaders.